It's good to be gathered together today. I'm Joel. I'm the lead pastor here, so I just got to meet somebody new this morning. That was really fun just to get a chance to say hello. And for those of you that have been around for a while, you kind of know who I am. So here we are. This is a good chance to be gathered together. And thank you, those of you joining us online. We're with you. You're with us. We are one church in a couple, many places. I love that, that we can be scattered but still be one together. Today, we're going to be jumping back into this series that we started last week called Walking with Jesus. And we're taking a look at the life of one of Jesus' first followers, one of his closest friends, this guy named Peter. Now, I don't know how much you may have background with, with church or whatever, but if you've come out of some backgrounds, maybe like a Catholic background, like you, you probably know Peter, like St. Peter, he's the guy on the stained glass windows, right? And it's just like, oh, he's one of them. And yet, I, I think what is fun is we're looking at Peter's life, we begin to realize, no, no, he's maybe more like one of us. <laughs> like just one of those guys who was just trying to figure it out in real time as he's walking with Jesus. And so we're going to spend some time in this series looking at his life. Because I don't know if you've ever been encouraged by someone else seeing them on their journey and how they figured things out. And it's like, oh, maybe I could do that too. So we're going to spend some time unpacking Peter's story. Last week, Ron kicked us off in this series. And one of the things that we saw in Peter's life was that from the very beginning when he met Jesus and Jesus calls him to follow him, Peter didn't have a clue. I mean, if you looked at Peter's resume, it's like, Jesus, why are you picking this guy? And then Jesus is like, because I know him more than he even knows himself. And one of the beautiful things that we saw coming out of the beginning of Peter's story is that Jesus doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies those he calls. So that means every single one of us has hope today, that when Jesus shows up in the story and says, hey, come with me, hey, follow me, we don't have to worry about the resume. We don't have to worry about our story as it is or as it was. All we have to worry about is the guy calling us, you've got plans for my life, I'm in. And we begin to walk with him. And so we're going to chase after that today as we continue looking at Peter's life and his story. And, and as we get started, just a quick question. Like, have you ever done something in life that kind of freaked you out? All right, someone has, yes. Some of you are like, nope, I'm boring. <laughs> well, I, I mean, have you ever, like, like, whatever that thing was or that moment that you were stepping into, you just felt like this is so beyond me, this is so beyond my ability, and yet in those moments, did you ever find that maybe there was somebody coming alongside of you that believed in you, that encouraged you, that spoke words of life in you, and suddenly you realize maybe I can because of this voice next to me? That's how I learned to swim in the ocean as a kid. Like gr growing up, I'm a so SoCal boy, and so uh, I grew up just going to the beach as a little kid. And as, a, as an adult, I love the roar of the waves. I love getting out and just body surfing in those. The bigger they are, bring it on. I love that. But that was not me as a little kid. As a little kid, if you could have seen Joel on the shoreline at Huntington Beach in Southern California, you would have seen the most ridiculous looking little kid. Because my mom, wanting to make sure I was safe in case of like, like riptide, she bought me this tank top tube that was this, this, this inflatable thing that went around my waist, and then I would just kind of run around the beach like this, like, woohoo, you know, and, and I'd love, and I'd go put my foot in the water, and then I'd just kind of come back, and, and I would just build sandcastles and have fun, and I just remember this one day, I'm living my best life on the shore, and I suddenly see the shadow over me, and I look up, and it's my dad, and he's got this big smile on his face, and he's like, son, today's the day. I'm like, for what? <laughs> and he's like, to learn to swim in the waves. And I was like, I'm good, Dad. <laughs> but he picked me up. <laughs> I'm kicking my legs. No, Dad, I'm good. I'm good. He's like, no, it's going to be good. Like, you, like, trust me. I know this is freaking you out, but trust me. You're going to thank me for this someday. Don't you love it when parents said that to you? <laughs> you're like, I don't know what that means. And so he, we start to walk out in the water. And let me tell you, the waves were huge that day. They were like maybe two feet tall. They were like epic and I'm panicked and I'm freaking out as my dad begins to take us out into the deeper water. And suddenly we're in waist deep from him. And I'm just clinging to him with everything he's got. And then he keeps going out a little bit farther. He's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Here's the plan. When the wave comes, I'm going to throw you over the wave. And then I'm going to duck under the wave. And then I'll come up. I'll find you in the churning. And then I'll grab you. And then we'll be okay. Sound good? And before I could say anything, he just chucks me in the air. And I'm flying head over heels over this wave, and then suddenly I'm splashing into the water and the roar and churning, and I'm just like, ugh, and the, like, the inner tube is like bringing me to the surface, and I'm like, at least I'm right side up. And, and then I just remember suddenly my dad would come up out of the water, he'd grab a hold of me, and he was just laughing. 
Isn't this great? I'm like, no. <laughs> and he's like, here comes another one. And we do it again. And just in my mind, I begin to think like, does he really love me? Like, I'm the youngest in the family. I know things are tight. Like, <laughs> like all the thoughts and the panic. And, and so we just did this over and over and over again. And I remember there's this one moment where he's like, okay, now we're going to really make it fun. And he starts to deflate the inner tube. And I'm just like, what are you doing? I don't know where you're at in your, your journey, your spiritual seeking. I don't know how close you've ever gotten to Jesus, but I just, I want to tell you something. As somebody who's walked with Jesus for a fairly length of time, that's what walking with Jesus can feel like sometimes. Like, like he suddenly like, like calls you into something and, and it kind of seems exciting at first or maybe not, but he's like, hey, let's go. Let's tackle this new adventure. Like when he called our family to Canada and we're like, no, 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 no. And we experience winter for the first time. And we're like, what are you doing, Jesus? <laughs> and then we get our whole lives established and settled in that place. And we think, now we're ready for the long haul. And now he's like, hey, let's come back to California. And we're like, kind of cool, but what are you doing? Like, there will be times when walking with Jesus will totally freak you out. But the good news is that Jesus doesn't say to us, hey, follow me because I've come to freak you out. <laughs> Jesus actually said he came to give us life. Look at, look at what he says in John 10.10. 10, one of his first friends recorded these words. Jesus says this. He says that the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. He's talking about Satan. And I don't know where you're at again on your spiritual journey. You're like, isn't that that dude with the pitchfork? And it's like, that's a caricature of him. But there's a very real evil in this world that is not with God and is out against us. And Jesus is like, I came to do battle with him on your behalf. And what he wants to do in your life is to take you out. But not me. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Like what Jesus is saying is I've come to invite every single person who would encounter me into something amazing. I've come to give them life. And see, Jesus invites us into that life, and as we begin to walk with him, we begin to step into this life he's come to give us. And we experience that life as we begin to believe him when he talks to us about life. And we begin to experience that life as we begin to trust him with the things he calls us to. As we begin to lean in and say, Jesus, tell me more about life. Tell me more about who I am and who God is and who you are and, and what it's all about. And as we begin to take steps of walking with him, as we place our faith in him, our trust in him, we begin to experience this life he wants to give us. And see, it's as we walk with Jesus that we begin to experience this life that he's come to lead us into. This life he's inviting every single one of us into. And see, that, that's the beautiful thing about Jesus He's not hung up on your story. He's not hung up on your past. He looks at you and me as we are, and he's like, I want to do something for you, and I want to do something with you, and I want to do something through you. Follow me. I've come to give you life. There's hope in that invitation. There's life in that invitation. And so we're going to chase the story of walking with Jesus through one of his first followers who experienced that reality because walking with Jesus will completely change your life. And so this is what we're seeing in the story of this guy, Peter. And we're going to jump into one of the stories of his life today. And so Peter has been walking with Jesus now for some time and, and Jesus has been doing some amazing things. And so we're going to see the story in Matthew's account of Jesus' life, Matthew 14. And this is what we begin to read in, in this story, this encounter Peter's going to have with Jesus. Matthew 14, verse 22, we're told this. It says, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Okay, so just, just a little bit of backstory, what's been going on here. Jesus and his first followers, they've been doing some amazing things. Jesus has just been moving around the area, sharing the good news of God's coming kingdom. They're like, God's, God's, God's for you. God wants to bring life. I'm proof of that. I'm Jesus. I've come to do something. And, and yet it wasn't the best of times always. Like, one of his family members, his cousin John, had just been executed by one of the ruling leaders. I mean, it's a heavy time for Jesus. And, and they had just done this epic moment where these crowds were gathered around him, and Jesus had been doing some teaching, and there's no food, and his disciples are freaking out, and Jesus just does something. He's like, so what do we got? And like, we got uh, a filet of fish Happy Meal from McDonald's, Jesus. That's all we got. 
And he's like, go give it to me and then watch. And then he feeds everybody. I mean, some amazing things have been going on, but, but you're tired and you're spent and you're sad. And Jesus realizes this. So he sends his disciples, hey, we're going to go get on the other side of the lake. We're going to take a break. You guys start the cruise without me. I'm going to go spend some time with dad. I'll catch up. And I love that. They don't ask how. They're just like, okay, Jesus, here we go. And so this is what's going on. So now they're out crossing the lake. Jesus has been out praying to the Father at nights, and now it's time to catch up. And so this is what we see. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. So you know it's a bad storm when Peter and a few others who are seasoned fishermen are starting to panic. Like, have you ever noticed, like, if you're on a plane and you hit turbulence, I always look at the flight attendants, because how they respond tells me, like, buckle up, right? So that's like the scenario, what's going on here. And so about three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. I just love how subtle Matthew is. So like Jesus is like, you guys go, I'll catch up. How? I'll take care of it. So here it is, Jesus is like, no problem. I'm just going to walk out to you guys. Now again, you're like, I don't, is that real? Is that whatever? Like, it seems strange. It's like, I, this is the story. This is what Jesus is doing. Lean in. <laughs> And so when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in their fear, and they cried out, it's a ghost. Because again, you don't see that every day. I don't know if you've been out on one of the local lakes at night, and you see someone walking on water, I think you might panic too. So now they're doubly panicked. They're in this crazy storm, and they see this person walking towards them, and they're like, what is going on? But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I'm here. And I love that. Like, Jesus is like, hey, I'm, I'm here now. You don't have to be afraid. And it's like, but I'm kind of afraid of you. <laughs> so what does this mean? And then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Okay, you ever had that friend that just seems really stupid in the moment? Like, I mean, this is, if I'm in the boat and I'm in this moment with all of them and we're seeing this intense thing and I'm like, what the heck is going on? The last thing I think I'm going to say is, can I, get, can I get out there with you? And yeah, here's Peter in this moment. He sees Jesus and he's like, hey, if that's really you, Jesus, tell me to come to you walking on the water. And I just got to ask a question in this moment. What is Peter thinking? Because that's just, that just doesn't seem like good behavior thinking. Like if that was my daughter, I'd be like, no, get your seatbelt on. And yet here's Peter like doing this. And it's just like, ask, like, I don't understand this. And now Matthew doesn't give us really any insight into Peter's internal thought world in this moment. So I think maybe we just kind of have to speculate a little bit. But here's what we do know from the story of Jesus and Peter and his other disciples. One thing we do know is this is not the first time they've all been together in a storm. There's another moment earlier in Matthew's account of, the, of, of Jesus' life in Matthew chapter 8. They're all caught up in a storm again. They're out in the middle of the same lake. They're all in the boat together in this moment. And this huge storm starts to hit. And they think they're going to die. They think it's that bad. And they're like, somebody go get Jesus. And Jesus is just sleeping in the middle of the storm. And so one of them goes to wake Jesus up. Like, Jesus, Jesus, wake up. We're like, don't you care about us? And in the story, we're told that Jesus wakes up. And you could tell he's kind of annoyed because he was having a really good nap. But I don't think he was annoyed with them so much as their lack of faith in him in the middle of the storm. Because when Jesus wakes up in this scene when they're all in the boat together, Jesus kind of looks at them and then he looks at the storm and he's like, be quiet. Except he wasn't talking to his followers. He was talking to the storm. And it listened to him. Because the minute he said those words, it was calm. And we're told in that moment that his followers were freaking out once more. They're like, who, who is this? That even the winds and the waves will listen to him. And so now we're in another scenario. They're in a storm once again with Jesus. And so here's Peter. Lord, if that's really you, ask me to come out to you. Because I think Peter's doing some math in his head. And he's realizing, hey, last time we were in this situation, Jesus was with us in the boat. But this time he's not. This time he's out in the storm. And maybe what Peter's thinking in this moment is maybe it's better to be with Jesus out in the storm than to be without him in the boat. Like, maybe it's actually better to be wherever Jesus is than what feels safe right now in this moment. I mean, have you ever wrestled with that? Have you ever wondered with that? Like, maybe in my life, in my story, the best place I could be, even though it might totally freak me out, is to be where Jesus is. That's why we went to Canada as a family. 
because we sense this calling in our story. And there was some part of me that realized, Joel, you have complete freedom to make this choice, but this is where I'm going in your story. Do you want to be a part of it? I don't, I don't want to be left behind. And so we took our family on this epic adventure. And I think maybe Peter's just crazy enough to think that it's better to be in the storm with Jesus than without him in the boat. I mean, maybe that's what he's thinking. I don't know, but maybe Peter's thinking something else too. Like, Peter had spent time with Jesus. He was on the front row when Jesus was doing all this incredible teaching and talking to them about life and how things work. And, and one of the things that Jesus said to them once upon a time was this in Luke 6.40. Jesus says that students are not greater than their teacher. Can I just say, I think maybe there's somebody here who just needs to hear those words in your relationship with Jesus. This little sidebar. Like, like maybe you're in your journey like, Jesus, I think I know more than you right now. And I think Jesus is just saying, let's have a conversation. <laughs> He's like, hey, students are not greater than their teacher, but the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. And so maybe in this moment, Peter's like, well, if Jesus can do it, maybe I can do it. This is one of the things I love about Peter. He's just crazy enough to think the crazy thoughts and to be like, well, let's try. And so here's Peter, like whatever the reasons are, he just asks this crazy question. He just says, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. And then Jesus' response to Peter's question is just equally remarkable to me. Yeah, Jesus said. Come on. They're like, again, I'm just trying to put myself in the boat with the other guys. And I'm like, what are you thinking, Peter? Wait, what did he say? I just love Jesus' response. Come on, bro. Let's do this. You and me, let's walk on some water. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. I mean, just put that on my tombstone if I got to experience that. Like your life is fundamentally different after a moment like that, don't you think? And yet it's Peter. <laughs> Peter's the guy that's just always stumbling and bumbling and falling after Jesus. So we don't know how many steps he took. We don't know how far he got, but he's Peter, which is why I love him. But when he, when Peter saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. I think there's something important to notice in that moment too. Here's Peter in this epic moment encountering something incredible with Jesus. And then the minute he takes his eyes off of Jesus, he starts to get in trouble. Again, have you ever experienced that? Like life gets sideways, and Jesus is like, eyes on me, I got you, let's do this. And you're like, nope, this is a bigger deal, I'm focusing over here. And then you just try to solve the problem on your own, or you try to fix it or something, and it just doesn't go well. Have you ever done that? Is it only me? I remember wrestling in my singleness. Jesus, am I really going to trust you with my singleness? Or am I going to solve the problem and pursue a relationship on my own? Jesus, am I really going to trust you with my finances? Or am I going to just solve the problem and try and figure it out on my own? I mean, the storms can be all sorts of things, right? It doesn't take much for us to turn our eyes away from him and things to go south really fast. But here again, here's our hope when we do that, when we're like Peter and we just start to flounder. Jesus doesn't give up on us because Peter says this. He's like, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? And I love that. He says to the guy that gets out of the boat, he has little faith. What does that mean for the guys in the boat? (laughs) And when they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped, and then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they explained. They exclaimed. See, in this moment, Peter, Peter got to walk with Jesus on the water in the middle of a storm. More than any of the others in this moment, Peter got to become more like Jesus than the rest of them because he chose to listen when Jesus called him into something that seemed crazy. See, I think there's some things we can learn from the story. If we're willing to lean in, if we're willing to listen, 
I think there's some things that might be going on in your story where Jesus is calling you to something and it just is terrifying you. It seems bigger than you. It seems beyond you. And yet maybe that's the best thing you could learn to do is to say, I trust you enough to take a step towards that, to come find you where you're at. Because one of the things that Jesus wants to do in all of our stories, this life that he's come to give to every single one of us, is to help us become more like him. Because when you and I become more like Jesus, we actually become the truest version of ourselves we could ever hope to be. But in order to do that, to become like Jesus, you have to be with Jesus. Like wherever he's at in your life, in your story, wherever he's on the move, whatever he's up to, we have to learn to keep our eyes on him, to tune into him, to pay attention to him, and to say, show me how to do that. Show me how to be like you. Like you have a heart. For, for justice, Jesus. And it's not retributive justice. It's not cancel culture justice. It's, it's a heart to make things better in this world. So how do I embrace that same heart and, and help to stand up for those who are being put down in our world today? And Jesus, you have a heart for the people that are, that, that are on the corners, the outcast. How do I have that same heart? So because one of the things I think Jesus wants to do in our story is to make us who we're meant to be, to make us like him. But that's never going to happen if we're not paying attention to him. Can I just tell you, there's a world of difference between going to church and being church. It's really hard to become like Jesus when the only time you spend with Jesus is 30 minutes on a Sunday once in a while. And you don't have to wait till Sunday to be with Jesus. You can pursue him, lean into him, look at the words of his life, study him, and say, help me to be like you on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. When I walk to the job site, when I show up in the office, when I spend time with my family, help me to be like you. And because he's good, he will. Because that's one of the things he wants to do in your story. That's how we become like him. And when Jesus calls us to join him, listen, when Jesus calls you to join him in what he's doing in this world, that is your invitation to get in the game. When you're out and about and he stirs something in the depths of who you are for another person or something that's going on, that's the invitation to join him. And I'll I'll just tell you this, I've been called to do things in my story that have been uncomfortable, that have scared me, but always on the other side when I said yes, when I gave Jesus my yes and I trusted him, I've never had a regret about that. Do you know the things that I've regretted? It's when I've not listened. It's when I'm on the other side and I'm like, I think I just missed a moment. And here he is inviting us into this. And so maybe you're wondering what this could possibly look like for your life today. Like maybe you're wondering, you're thinking to yourself, yeah, see, but Peter got to walk on water because Jesus called him. Like where's my calling, Jesus? Like why is it that it seems like some people get to do this extraordinary, amazing things? Like have you ever wondered that? Hey, what about me? Like Jesus, what about me and my story? Because the reality in the story that we just saw, only one guy got to walk on water with Jesus that day. The others didn't. And some part of me says, I don't think that's very fair, Jesus. How come Peter got to do it? But why did Peter get to do it? What did he do that the others didn't do? When he sees Jesus out in the water, what does Peter say? Hey! Jesus! If that's you, call me out to you. And then Jesus said, come. Maybe what some of us need to start doing is to dare to have the audacity to call out to Jesus, to call us out to him. Hey, Jesus, whatever you're doing in this world, I double dare you to call me out of the boat. (laughs) And then when he does, to say, okay, let's take this wild step. See, maybe the real question in this story isn't what was Peter thinking. Maybe the real question in the story is, 
What were the others thinking? Why did they choose to settle for what was safe and comfortable when they'd been walking with Jesus the same amount of time as this guy Peter had been? Why did they choose to settle for what felt safe? Because maybe for them in that moment, the boat felt safe, the storm was the real danger. And yet maybe they had it wrong in their heads. Because maybe the real danger isn't the storm. Maybe the real danger is settling for what's safe and comfortable and missing out on moments to walk with Jesus. To take a step with him into that thing that seems like it's so beyond you. That thing that seems like it's freaking you out. Like maybe he's been stirring something in your heart and, and, and there's an epic move he's inviting you into and you're like, I just don't know if I want to do that. I don't want to give up what's safe and comfortable. And let me tell you, that's the invitation. Maybe it's reaching out to somebody that's just this difficult relationship in your life and you're like, but Jesus, you don't know what they're like. And he's like, yes, I do. I also know what you're like and I like you, so let's work on this. And that's part of what he wants to begin to do in your story. But if we choose comfort and safety, that becomes our God. We miss out on the one who's speaking to us with the voice of God to call us into the life that he's created for us. See, because when we're willing to step out into the places where Jesus is, like even if that's in the middle of a storm, that's when something in us comes to life. And we start to realize, I was made for this. I don't know, maybe after the fifth or sixth wave, as I'm just floating in the air, my dad had just pitched me over the next wave, I began to realize every time he's caught me, it's not like I showed up and dad was washed up on the beach and I was left out on my own. As I'm flying in the air over this one wave, I suddenly begin to realize, this is kind of fun. I mean, I'm still like peeing in the ocean because I'm scared, but this is kind of fun. I remember my dad just picked me up after one of the waves and he just looks me eye to eye and he's like, isn't this the best? And I'm like, I'm... I'm thinking it might be, Dad. I'm thinking like like you were right. I'm thinking I really like this. The reason I love the roar of the ocean, the reason why I hear those waves and something in me says, let's get out there, is because there was a moment in my life when I went into the deep with Dad. And he showed me a greater life than the one I was living on the shoreline. What's dad calling you into today? And you get to choose. And we can live on the shoreline building the sandcastles. That's not a bad life. But is it your best life? Because there's a moment coming in your story where dad wants to call you into the deep. And in that place, you'll discover you are so much more than you ever thought you could be. There's a story God wants to tell in you and through you. And it's your willingness to say, call me out and listen to him when he says, come. And when you do that, you begin to experience the life you were created for, the life Jesus has come to give you. And so I want to pray for you right now. I want to pray for every single one of us in this room. I want to pray for myself in this moment. And let's just pretend we're all sitting in the boat together. And as we're walking into this coming week, there's someone out in the storm, whatever that is for you. And in that place, he's saying, come. What will that look like for you this week? And so let me pray for us that we would have the courage, that we would have the audacity to take that step with Jesus this week. And so, Father, we're here in this place Because you have loved us. You loved us so much you sent your son into this world to walk with us and invite us into something new with you. So God, thank you that, that you have a life for us. But would we never settle for what's less in that life, but actually chase you into more of that life. Because whether this is our first day of walking with you or this is our 10th 
20th, 30th, 40th decade of walking with you, there is still more of this adventure to be found with you. And so would you give us ears to hear what you're doing in the world around us? Would you give us ears to hear what you're stirring within us? And would you give us the audacious courage to take that step with you so that we can walk on water with you this week? Thank you that you freak us out because you know what's best. Amen, amen.